Yes, uh, so we're here to talk about oneself.co. Really pleased to be here to talk to you about it. Um, you may have seen it introduced in the EE newsletter a week or so ago as Logio. Um, we've sort of been playing around with the names for a while, uh, and we think that oneself probably better represents what it's all about. So oneself is the new name for what you may have heard of as Logio. Uh, anyway, it's all about visualized data about you. Uh, before we go into that in any more detail, so I'm Martin, this is Ed. Uh, as the other Ed said, my world is full of Eds and Es and all sorts these days, which uh, um, I'm struggling to keep track of. But uh, myself and Ed uh, spoke to this Ed uh, back around Christmas time, um, thinking about, uh, talking about the opportunity to do something with equal experts. Uh, this Ed and me had been talking about uh, the concept behind oneself for a while. Um, and it just seemed like a really good fit because obviously equal experts have got deep technology capability. Uh, we hope we've got a great idea about what we can create. So between us, we hope that uh, we can create a really good business working between us and equal experts um, to create oneself. So uh, we've already started. So we've got a small team of equal experts in India. Uh, so you may recognize Deval in the middle, uh, and then we've got Chinmay and Devika, and then there's Ed, and then Radhika and Vivek. Uh, so we've been working with them on a daily basis, doing our Hangouts every morning on Google. Um, mostly we're doing technology stuff. There's quite a lot of talk about biscuits as well. Uh, between us, there's a real uh, sense of connection around biscuits, but that's not really anything to do with anything else. Well, <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> Yeah, we prefer the dark chocolate digestive. Uh, there's all sorts of crazy biscuits in India. That <laughs> Deval pretty much has a new biscuit pretty much every day. Um, he's well looked after, I think. He, but he manages to stay quite fit looking, so well done, Deval. Um, <laughs> so without further ado, uh, the other reason, <laughs> this is obviously the other reason for changing the name. It gives us a great opportunity for bad jokes. Uh, and talking about underwear. So why have I got a picture of a pair of pants on the screen? We, we, uh, we're living in a world where one day we'll all be wearing smart pants, maybe. But anyway, these are things that have been developed in MIT. So up here is a special uh, smart strip which uh, can create, collect various bits of data about you whilst you're wearing these pants. So. Uh, <laughs> It's not in production yet, so you can't go out and buy these, although I'm sure you're all desperate to go out and get them from Marks and Spencers or wherever else as quickly as you can. But the theory is these will be, this will be a washable, intelligent strip that's attached to your waistband of your pants, uh, which can collect amazing data about you, such as the blood sugar level, salt level, potassium, all these sorts of interesting things that maybe could be useful in health diagnosis or uh, just for fun to check out what your potassium level was after you had a banana, something like that. But um, the reason I'm showing you the pants is because <laughs> that's kind of the extreme end of this kind of growing trend of the ability to collect more and more data about ourselves. So bring it back to a bit more real life. As we go about our daily business these days, the things we interact with via our phones or via the Oyster card in our pocket or whatever else are collecting data about us kind of whether we like it or not. So um, all of these things are up here, just a few random examples, uh, collecting different bits of data about you. So from your shops up here, so Amazon, Tesco, they're collecting uh, data about what you're buying, when you bought it, how much you spent, what sort of things you liked. Uh, we've got sort of media over here. So we've got YouTube and Spotify collecting the songs you listen to, the YouTube videos you watch. Uh, you've got Netflix and Sky who, uh, what, again, television, television you watch, the movies you watch. Uh, you've got social media, which is the tweets you send, the uh, connections you make, uh, the followers you gain. Uh, you've got your game scores, spending far too much time on Candy Crush, uh, collecting levels and things like that. Uh, as developers, you might be more familiar with Stack Overflow and GitHub. So these things are also things you interact with. There's data being collected about you there. And to a greater or lesser extent, these things um, allow you to interact with that data for your own benefit. So something like uh, Tesco, they obviously give you an 
order history. They tell you kind of what you bought if you, if you go into your order history. But they know so much more about you. They know kind of how much fruit and veg you buy. They know how much you spend on bathroom products and all these sorts of things. But they don't really let you have that information yourself very readily. Similarly, uh, these sorts of things, so YouTube, Spotify, they let you, uh, you um, in, actually you can't in Spotify, in iTunes you used to be able to see your play counts on certain tracks and that sort of thing. But again, it, the data's all there under the, under the uh, covers for them to use, but it's not there for you to use. So what we're proposing with OneSelf is we're providing a platform where all these sorts of event-driven bits of data that are related to you, you can choose if you want to, to bring them into your own OneSelf account. So we'll create a platform where these events can be brought together and you can review your, I don't know, the sugar level of the, your average sugar level of the groceries you buy from Tesco. You'll be able to connect um, data streams from each of these silos together to create new and interesting correlations. Um, so, I don't know, maybe you reply to more emails when you're listening to a certain type of music, that sort of thing. So, we don't know what sort of connections would be interesting or useful yet, but we're hoping that by creating this platform that allows these things to be brought together, there'll be all sorts of interesting, useful, entertaining insights that can be brought out of bringing that data together. So another briefer way of saying that is OneSelf is a hub for all of your personal structured data, so event-driven elements of data about you. And we want to try and bring them together in a way that you as a consumer can explore your own data, use your own data, and hopefully we get to a point where we can surface useful and interesting insights as a result of that data. And the third bit is we want to create a developer platform to uh, provide these personal data visualizations so that developers can plug this capability into their own apps and help make their, app, their own apps more interesting and engaging for their users by playing back data about those users to them. And we'll, I'll come on to that a bit more as we go along. So in terms of the data sources that are out there, it's kind of a classic long tail model. So we've got um, the short head of the established app. So these are the big guys that we're all familiar with. Uh, they're all creating loads of data about you. And to a greater or lesser extent, they provide open APIs that allow us to get access to some of that data. So again, if you choose, if you're interested in thinking, well, what were my follower accounts over time, which is something Twitter don't provide natively, then we could connect oneself, you could connect your oneself account to Twitter by authorizing it and start to collect that data, and we can start to store that for you. Uh, similarly for the, these other ones, so uh, Amazon say, uh, we could start collecting that information as well. Uh, then there's the long tail, which is kind of the hundreds and hundreds, thousands of other apps and devices and websites that developers all over the world are creating more and more of. So we think that there's a potential to provide more collection of data for the service of the person, of the user, from those apps, and also to play back some of the interactions that happen in those, app, uh, those applications back to the users. And we think that by doing that, those, those apps who integrate with it will get benefit from doing that. So Ed and I have sort of talked about this a lot, obviously. Uh, one of the examples that we've talked about is a guitar tuner app. So a very niche, very small, specialized little app. Ed's a guitar player. Um, he'll do your rendition in the pub later if we can find a guitar. Uh, um, and the guitar tuner app does what it says on the tin. It, tune, it allows him to tune his guitar just before practicing. But the interesting thing is, it becomes a proxy for how often he practices. So by collecting when he opens that app, if he could visualize the data around the opens of that app, he could start to understand how often he practices guitar. And maybe he could correlate that with, well, has he been listening to more music? Does that make him more likely to practice? Or what sort of music makes him more likely to practice? So these are potential things that he could find it useful and interesting to correlate. Um, but that's a specialized app just for guitar tuning. So the developer of that app is probably never going to write that bit of functionality. He's never going to give you, spend the time to write in a data collection and data visualization capability for his app. But we think by providing this off the shelf to him, then he could uh, provide that immediately to his users with very little effort. So to describe what this is in a bit more pictorial format, we've got the OneSelf platform which sits in the middle, which is essentially an enhanced data store. So we're storing event data, and what we want to do is be able to provide really easy inputs and outputs for that data 
into the platform. So we'll provide uh, a bit of structure around the data, we'll provide the framework around kind of whose data it is, and we'll provide uh, visualizations that we can send out from the platform that can be embedded both in our own app and in the developer's apps. So we'll connect that uh, to the large platform APIs. So the ones that are available, we'll gradually go through those and enable a connection to each of those so that if you're a user of the OneSelf platform, you can, if you choose, connect up your Facebook data or your Gmail data or your uh, Amazon data. Then we'll stick uh, an API and client library on top of the platform, which will enable all those, uh, the long tail and beyond, hopefully, apps to connect directly to the OneSelf platform. So if you're an app developer, or you want to uh, collect data about your users in a way that helps them, then you can connect via our API, send it into our platform, and we'll send back out really easy to integrate visualizations of that data. So kind of like really nice D3 charts off the shelf, say. And then on the side, we'll then create a consumer app, which brings all this together from a consumer's point of view. So all this data that you're collecting, which previously had been dotted around all these different apps, you could review that all in one place on the OneSelf app if you want to. It will still be available in those other apps, but we'll provide a different cut on it, a different kind of way of interacting with it in the OneSelf app. Uh, so we're aware this is an ambitious project. There's a lot to do, uh, and there's you know uh, many, many apps that this could benefit. Um, but the first is to find some that will benefit. So in terms of how we take this to market, what we want to do is really focus on uh, the developers of that long tail. So we want to provide real value to those developers and say, hey, we've got something that can help you in what you're trying to do. So focus first on building a developer platform and proposition. So all that bit about an easy way for developers to plug into their app that they're building and send the data in and get great visualizations out to help their users. That's what we want to build first. Later on, we can do a broader focus on the consumer proposition and make it a much, much more rounded proposition. Um, so if we're targeting developers, what's in it for them? Uh, we think these things. So talked about this already, obviously. Uh, beautiful interactive data visualizations. So rather than having to go through and work out what on earth is going on with D3, which having looked at it myself, I'm not, I don't do much development these days, but it's complicated, especially to get it to look, work, look nice and work across loads of different platforms. So we're hoping that we can provide Something like D3, probably it'll maybe built on D3, we haven't decided that yet, but a really nice interactive visualization capability that from a developer point of view, all you need to do is literally pick your uh, document object and say, right, put me a data visualization in that space and we'll do the rest for you. On top of that, we think that the benefit of doing that to, for your users, if you're an app builder, is by providing data to your users about themselves, that will make your app more engaging and interesting to your users. So if you've got an app that, like the guitar tuner that says, hey, this is how often you use this app, in that particular case, it's interesting to your users because it helps them understand how often they're practicing. So immediately, you've made that guitar tuner app that little bit more engaging, that little bit more interesting, that little bit more personal to your users. And finally, we think, once we've got a network up and running, we can actually help app developers get more users with this platform. Because with an interplay between the data sets, if certain users are finding value in correlating certain bits of data, so the one I mentioned before, if you're, the music you listen to has an effect on the amount of practice you do for your guitar, then if we're finding that some people who uh, listen to a lot of music are finding value from that, then we can potentially suggest they might want to download the Guitar Tuner app to other people who haven't downloaded it yet. We could say, hey, here's a, cool, here's a cool correlation that you may not have realized you could do. But all you need to do is download this Guitar Tuner app, and there's some more insight that you can get from that. So they're the three core benefits that we think we can provide to developers. Um, so what are we doing? We've been doing this for just over two months now uh, in terms of proper full-time work. Uh, so, where have we got to, and is there anything to see? And I'll hand over to my glamorous assistant to uh, tell you about that. You're too <laughs> kind. Um, so, uh, how are we going to see? Yes, we do. Um, uh, not if I press that button. Uh, if I press that button, then something comes up. So, we are building Quantify Dev. What is Quantify Dev? It's an 
app on top of the platform, as Martin described earlier. So this will allow us to, it's something interesting in its own right, it will allow us to reach the developers that we think uh, will get value from the platform and could build apps to the platform, and it allows us to dog food our own platform and drive the development of our platform. What does Quantify Dev do? It logs and compares your software development data for personal insights. This is your personal software development data. Um, so what does that mean? It means that if you can automatically log all the data, all the um, log data from all the different thing applications you use, and you can keep it as you move between different projects, clients, and um, between different languages. Uh, you can connect up all your different things that you do, all the different development trails that you leave. So uh, you can connect up Visual Studio builds, you can connect up the tests, how many tests you ran, you can connect up how many GitHub commits you made, the, how many questions you asked and answered on Stack Overflow. All these things can be connected and you would do that so that you can compare yourself to either yourself in the past or your peers, your friends, uh, community that you're part of, people are using the same language as you. Um, you could, if you chose, if you wanted to, you could take that digital record and you could use that as a digital CV to take to people to prove that you, you have worked on this language and prove that you've done TDD um, as a digital CV. And you could then generate insights and use those insights to set targets and to improve and to become better. Um, so I'm going to give you a demo. I'm aware that we're running a little bit uh, into the Q&A, so this is going to be quick. Uh, so, Quantify Dev, let's go and have a look at what that is. Uh, so this is Quantify Dev, this is the dashboard. Um, the, um, so what we have here, um, we have my personal build history from the last month or so. And you can see here the pink is failed builds, blue is successful. And you can see my behavior, my build behavior at the beginning of April was different to my build behavior now. More successful builds. Other interesting things that we could do, uh, which really plays into the strength of the OneSelf platform, is I can correlate my the hours I slept versus the number of builds that I did. So, um, so let's imagine I'm already logging my sleep because I've been using that to look at my behavior when I practice guitar. Do I practice more if I have more rest? When you then come to Quantify Dev, you don't have to re-log all that information to provide the insights. That information is already there, and that starts to show the power of this connected platform. Um, so uh, that's just, and all these things come out of the box from the OneSell platform. How does this work? Um, what happens is the plugins that we have, the development environments and tools, send this data up into the OneSell platform as events, and then, um, as an application developer, I've hooked into our client libraries and I simply specify the visualizations I want and the metrics that I want, and this all happens really easily and out of the box. Um, it doesn't stop there. Um, there's also geographic visualization. So if I go here, we have, um, this is a geographic visualization of different, different, kind of, um, different levels of zoomed, and this is showing my builds. Um, so let's go and just show you that working um, in here. Uh, so I've got Visual Studio here. So if I do uh, hello PE and do a build, now when I flick back, you should see that pop up in here. And the magic of a working demo that happens once in a lifetime, I think. Um, so what you're seeing here is my build. You might say, so what? That's not very interesting. I already know where I am. I know what language I'm working on. But really, the power of this, I think, comes in when we get into uh, the point where we have a whole community involved in this. So when you've got a whole community involved, let me refresh that, because it'll make it easier to see. Um, you're going to start to see things happening, like build starting in Bristol, in Birmingham. So you're going to start to feel connected to the development community. Um, you're going to start to see all the people around you who are using the same languages as you, who are using the same development stack. You're going to see the people around you who are answering questions on Stack Overflow. You're going to start to see people who are practicing TDD. And this will all be happening around the whole world. I think it's going to be really interesting to see that. Um, so, uh, so that is Quantified Dev. Um, we would love you to get involved in this. Um, we'd love it if you started logging your data. If you did want to start logging 
your data. You can go to quantifieddev.org and you can sign up and we will give you access and we'll also give you updates as we build this out and build the tools for your development environment. If you wanted to, if you wanted to get support for your dev tools sooner than we can build it, all this is open source, the application is open source, so you can come and contribute and build those tools yourself. So, um, so thank you very much for, uh, for listening. That is Quantified Dev.